Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host Mondane, this video is part of my underrated games series, and today we're going to be talking about the Super Nintendo and one very special TurboGrafx-16 game. Every year games go unnoticed, titles just living in filth, cowering at the back of a store. They're trapped, they're scared, they spend their days on their nights on the backlog, never to be played, forever sitting on a shelf. Here at Mondane Designs, we're committed to searching every dark corner to find them, and to help heal the deep physical and emotional wounds that have been inflicted on them. Your subscription is urgently needed, so please sign up now. It costs nothing, and you'll help games that are suffering. The situation is urgent, and so we're asking you to subscribe and like this video. Our first game is one that is near and dear to my heart, where I took a chance, where others shied away from its unconventional box art. But I saw something there. I looked at the back of that box, and I discovered our first title, Phalanx. Phalanx is a side-scrolling shooter game that is exclusive to the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, and it later released on the Game Boy Advance. The game is set in a post-apocalyptic world where humanity is on the brink of extinction. The player takes the role of a lone warrior who's on a mission to save humanity from the Phalanx, a powerful alien race that has invaded Earth. The game's graphics are impressive for a Super Nintendo game, the, background is art, the backgrounds are detailed, and the character designs are well done. The animation is smooth and overall presentation is top-notch. The game's sound effects and music are also well done and add to the overall experience. The gameplay is fast-paced and challenging. The player must navigate through several different levels, fighting off hordes of enemies and bosses. The player can collect power-ups and weapons to help them in their endeavors. The controls are responsive and easy to use, making the game accessible to players of all skill levels. That's very important for games like this. Uh, with a low barrier of entry, you definitely want to be able to attract more players to something new like this. One of the things that sets Phalanx apart from other side-scrolling shooters is its level design. Each level is unique and offers different challenges. The game also has a high replay value, as the players can go back and try to complete levels faster or with a higher score. Overall, Phalanx is a solid side-scrolling shooter game that is worth checking out for fans of the genre. The game's graphics and sound are impressive, and the gameplay is challenging and fun, and the level design is quite unique. The game's high replay value makes, a, makes it a great addition to any Super Nintendo library. Our second undiscovered game is one that I discovered in my youth because of a friend that we constantly had sleepover parties and late night gaming and stuff, and just doing everything that we possibly could to be as nerdy as we could. And so we played a Star Trek game. And I have to say, this is probably my favorite Star Trek game. Not for the story, it's actually for the versus mode. Star Trek Starfleet Academy Starship Bridge Simulator. And yes, that's the entire title. On the Super Nintendo is a unique, enjoyable game that immerses players in the Star Trek universe. The game is a simulation of the Starship Bridge where players must complete various missions and navigate through space. The gameplay is challenging, but not impossible, and the graphics and sound effects are impressive for a Super Nintendo game. The game starts with a tutorial to explain how to control the various situations on the bridge, including the helm, communications, and weapons. Players must learn how to operate these situations effectively in order to complete the missions. The missions are varied and include everything from rescuing stranded starships and engaging in battles with enemy ships. The controls are pretty intuitive and easy to learn, 
making it easy for players to jump right into the game. The graphics are also very well done with detailed ships and backgrounds. The sound effects are also well done, with the various beeps and boops of the bridge adding to the immersion. One of the best things about the game is the sense of immersion it provides. Players really feel like they're on the bridge of a starship, and the missions are challenging enough to keep the players engaged. The game also has a high replay value as players can attempt to complete the missions in different ways. Overall, Star Trek Starfleet Academy Starship Bridge Simulator, and yes, that is still a mouthful, on the Super Nintendo is a great game for fans of the Star Trek universe. The gameplay is challenging and engaging, and the graphics and sound effects are impressive, and the sense of immersion is unparalleled. The game is a must-have for any Star Trek fan or anyone who enjoys simulation games. Our next game is one that I actually spotted a different version of, and I wanted that version of it, but I never could find it again. I found it at a mall in the 90s, and I was on a band trip, and I didn't have the money at the time, even though I really wanted it. And I could have maybe skipped lunch that day to try to, like, afford the game. But it wasn't really worth it at that time. And yes, I kind of have remorse about not picking that one up. But later, I found out that this game was actually released on the Super Nintendo. And that it was an upgraded version of the game. And I was kind of interested. At the time, I was working at a used video game store and got a hold of it. And I was really surprised at, at like what I had missed out on. And then I got to compare it to the older version on the TurboGrafx-16. And, you know, it was okay. And I was actually a lot happier with the version that was released on the Super Nintendo. And that game, folks, is Super Chase HQ. Super Chase HQ on the Super Nintendo is an intense and thrilling driving game that will keep you on the edge of your seat. The game features fast-paced action and high-speed chases, making it a must-play for fans of racing and action games. The gameplay in Super Chase HQ is top-notch, with tight controls and smooth mechanics that makes it easy to pick up and play. The game's multiple levels over a variety of challenges, from simple tr time trials to intense car chases and shootouts. The graphic and sound effects are also impressive. With detailed environments and a pulse-pounding soundtrack that keeps the action moving. One of the standout features of Super Chase HQ is the variety of vehicles. The player can choose from a range of cars and trucks, each with its own unique handling and performance. This adds an extra layer of strategy to the game, as players must choose the right vehicle for the task at hand. In terms of replayability, Super Chase HQ offers a lot of replay value. The game's multiple levels and vehicles means that players will have to put in some serious time and effort to beat it. And the high-speed action and intense chases will keep players coming back for more. In conclusion, Super Chase HQ is a must-play for fans of racing and action games. Its fast-paced gameplay and tight controls and variety of vehicles make it a thrilling and, ga a thrilling and engaging experience. I would highly recommend it to anyone looking for a high-octane driving game experience on the Super Nintendo. I grew up being nerdy. Uh, my dad was a cute computer programmer and one of the first dungeon masters in Alabama. And he ran a hobby store for a while. He actually worked at multiple hobby stores. I worked at a comic book shop slash hobby store as well. Uh, during college and a little bit after. And this next game is comic book rela related. And honestly, it was kind of a shock when this event happened. Superman was viewed as invincible. And his death was 
kind of shocking for fan. Um, there were many, many comic book stores that had a funeral service. There were people who wore the black armband with the, you know, the Superman S on it in silver. And it was just this odd cultural thing that happened. And that's where this next game is going to come in. And it is Death and Return of Superman for the Super Nintendo. I got this game and it's actually on a copy cart from Japan, which is weird. It's one of those things where you would walk up to a machine and plug a blank cartridge into it. And I know that the game that I have, it looks fake. It looks like a bootleg. Why bootleg that game? Um, but I, I, I really did look into it and this is actually one of those copying cart services and for some reason my version of the game is still in English though the, the copy cart things were only in Japan but let's get on to the game Death and Return of Superman for the Super Nintendo is a solid beat-em-up game that is true to the source material. The game follows the story of the death of Superman and his eventual return, allowing players to control various iterations of the character as they fight through hordes of enemies. The game controls are tight and responsive, and the graphics are solid for a Super Nintendo game. The game's level design is well done, and the boss battles are challenging and satisfying. However, the game can get repetitive after a while, and the difficulty level may be too high for some players. Overall, Death and Return of Superman is a must-play for fans of the character and the beat-em-up genre. Have you ever played one of those games that seems simple at first, and then it, as you examine things and get further and further into it, you notice more and more complexities. That's what happened with this game. And I remember discovering it and sharing it with my friends and suddenly me and Sinchatus both had a copy of this game and we were very competitive on this. I mean, we spent hours and hours and hours and hours playing this game competitively either through score attack or racing or who could do the best tricks or who could do tricks on command and like a like a game of weird game of horse or something like that and it was unbelievable and yes this is a super nintendo game i'm not talking about ssx trick although that one was good too this was Kind of the precursor to SSA. And the game I'm talking about is Uniracer. And it's just a phenomenal game. I absolutely love it. With all of the weird things you can do, all the complex tricks and the the tabletop and the, the flipping, and every time you do a trick, you go faster and faster and faster and faster. And getting through all of the story was just so difficult because eventually you run into the anti-uni and unfortunately this game got unjustly hit with a couple of copyright infringements from I believe Pixar it was and yeah I get it I get that it looks a whole lot like what the character you guys created but I'm not so sure that that's what they intended. They were just doing a silly racing game and it's great. Um, unfortunately, with all of that copyright stuff, I don't believe this game's going to ever see a re-release. So if you find a copy, grab it. Grab it, have fun with it, try it out, let me know. Uniracers developed by DMA Designs and published by Nintendo is a unique racing game that features unicycles as the main vehicle. The game is exclusive to the Super Nintendo Entertainment System and was released in 1994. 
Uniracers offers a variety of game modes, including Time Trial, Race, and Freestyle. In the Time Trial mode, players race against the clock to achieve the best possible time on a track. In Race mode, players must compete against computer-controlled opponents to finish first. Freestyle mode allows players to perform stunts and tricks to earn points. The game's graphics are colorful, vibrant, with smooth animation and detailed background. The unicycles are well designed and move fluidly, making it easy to control them during gameplay. The game's soundtrack is also noteworthy, a catchy, upbeat music that adds to the overall fun and energetic atmosphere of the game. The gameplay itself is unique and challenging. The unicycles can perform a variety of stunts and tricks, such as flips and spins, which can be used to gain an advantage over opponents. However, mastering these maneuvers takes skill and practice, making the game a little bit difficult for newer players. Overall, Uniracers is a fun and unique racing game that offers a refreshing change from traditional car and motorcycle based racing game. Its unique gameplay and colorful graphics make it a must play for fans of racing games on the Super Nintendo. However, the game's steep learning curve may make it less accessible to casual players. As we come up on my final game for this video, I have to tell you the story behind it. I originally discovered this game in its arcade form, and it was actually at a movie theater where they had a competition where if you got the high score in the number one slot on the arcade machine, you got a free movie pass. It was only 25 cents to play. I was actually pretty decent at the game. My dad noticed this and he noticed that the game was actually available on one of the home consoles that I owned. And he decided to purchase it for me, which was great because I was a kid and I loved getting new toys and new video games, and I didn't mind getting another one. So my dad had ulteri ulterior motives, and it was great because his idea was for me to train on this game a lot. And I did because I enjoyed the game and I was good at it. And so one summer, we got to go to the movies as much as we wanted to because I would get the high score for 25 cents on this game at the arcade. And then I would turn around and get the high score again for another 25 cents and get a second movie pass. So that summer, we got to see a lot of movies for 50 cents. And it was great. I got to see pretty much anything I wanted. And this game that my dad took the time to go find and track down and get for me is on the TurboGrafx-16. And if you've heard me say this before, you know what game I'm talking about. It's Aero Blasters for the TurboGrafx-16. I love this schmuck. I actually like the TG-16 version of it better than the arcade version. I just like the way that it sounds, all of the uh, soundtrack and the the sound effects and things like that. I like the how the levels are just a little bit different. It just feels like the TG-16 version had a little bit more polish on it than the arcade version. Which, I mean, that's fine. You can like whichever version of it that you like. Uh, there's even a Sega Genesis version of this game. Um, I just happen to prefer the TG-16 version because it's the one I practice on the most. And I have a special memory attached to it. Aero Blasters for the TurboGrafx-16 is an action-packed, fast-paced shooter that is sure to keep players on the edge of their seats. The game features a variety of different levels, each with its own unique challenges and obstacles. Controls are smooth and responsive, making it easy to navigate through the game's challenging environment. And trust me folks, this game will challenge you. The graphics in Aero Blasters are impressive, with detailed backgrounds and colorful, well-animated ships. The game's soundtrack is also noteworthy, 
featuring a catchy, upbeat soundtrack that adds to the overall excitement and fast-paced nature of the game. One of the standout features of Aerial Blasters is its boss battle. Each level culminates in a challenging boss fight that requires quick reflexes and precise aiming to defeat. These battles are intense and add a lot of replayability to the game. Overall, Aerial Blasters is a fantastic shooter that is sure to keep players entertained for hours on end. Challenging gameplay, impressive graphics, and catchy soundtrack make it a must-play for fans of the genre. I highly recommend this game to anyone looking for an action-packed and thrilling gaming experience. And that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and I look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.